Show me. A few weeks ago, I made a video discussing five Jackie Chan movies that I think deserve more attention, more praise. Five movies that are just extremely underrated. Well, this week we're going to, you know, put the thing down, flip it, and reverse it, and talk about five Jackie Chan movies that I think get too much praise. Five Jackie Chan movies that people absolutely love, adore, say are some of the very best, and I just think really are not that good. I mean, yeah, they're good. Almost any Jackie Chan movie is, like, pretty good, but... People say these are some of the greatest movies ever made, and I just cannot agree. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight to it. Here are five overrated Jackie Chan movies. Number five, Rumble in the Bronx. Oh yeah, that's right. We're getting started with a big one. Rumble in the Bronx is regarded as one of the quintessential Jackie Chan films. Really just because it's the one that really exposed Jackie to the Western world. America, at least. While Jackie had made a few appearances in Hollywood in films like Cannonball Run and The Protector and The Big Brawl, these movies never really blew up much. Until, of course, Rumble in the Bronx got some play in America. While Jackie Chan had had some success, or at least people had discovered Jackie through, I don't know, Kung Fu Theater on, uh, on television, this was the one that really got Jackie into a more mainstream audience. Rumble in the Bronx is about Jackie coming to New York to help out around his uncle's store when it becomes apparent that this gang of miscreants is causing a whole bunch of trouble, wrecking up the place, making it hell for his uncle and his employees. And of course, Jackie has to step in and fix things. Rumble in the Bronx is sincerely a lot of fun. And it has some of Jackie's most entertaining stunts and fights for the first half of the movie. That's about it. Everything after that, snooze fest. Okay, it's not a snooze fest. It's just not as good as everything that happened before. The reason this movie is on this list of absolutely overrated movies is because while Rumble in the Bronx is regarded as one of Jackie's best, I think fans would be hard pressed to recollect anything that memorable happening past the first half, other than a hovercraft and Jackie breaking his foot. That's pretty much it. The store fight, the glass bottles in the alleyway, Jackie jumping from the rooftop to the other building, the clubhouse fight with all the gangs where he's hitting people with refrigerators and and like a big ski or something. The best parts of this movie. Heck, Jackie Chan, you know, flexing in front of a two-way mirror as Anita Moy is on the other side laughing at him. All of these things happen. These entertaining moments happen in the first half. And while we're talking about Anita Moy, she's great, but she's really not given enough to do. Anita Moy is an absolute delight. She is given so much more to do in films like Heroic Trio, where she's a lead, or Drunken Master 2, or even My Father is a Hero. Yes, I know she did more dramatic work, but of course I'm mostly familiar with her kung fu and martial arts related films. Nonetheless, Anita Moy is an absolute icon and a delightful entertainer, and she's just not really given that much to do in Rumble in the Bronx. I love this movie, I really do, but whenever that clubhouse fight with the gang is over, Honestly, you can just turn this movie off. Get halfway through, you're done. Club fight's done, well, movie's over. Oh, we still got 45 minutes to an hour? Nah, we don't, nope, turn it off. Hold it. Number four, First Strike. The police story films are some of Jackie's 
highest regarded films. Three of them are seen as some of the very best action films of all time. One of those three is not First Strike. Do you remember anything about the plot of First Strike? I, I, don't, I don't think I do. I think he's looking for like a nuclear warhead. I could be totally wrong. I don't... This is one issue with First Strike. I don't remember anything. I got nothing. One of Jackie's most memorable fight scenes in any film of all time happens in First Strike. I am of course talking about the fight in which Jackie throws around a ladder like he is Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam 2000. And this fight is amazing. It deserves every single bit of praise that it has gotten over 20 plus years. But what else does First Strike have? Aside from Jackie running away from pre-pro wrestling, pre-protector Nathan Jones, I don't remember anything else about this movie. When someone asks me if they should watch this movie, my typical answer would be, well, sure. If you have an hour and 47 minutes to scroll through your phone until you can look away for four minutes at the one good part of the movie. But if you don't have an hour and 47 minutes to scroll through your phone only to look away for about four minutes at the one good part of the movie, then maybe just look up that one fight scene on YouTube. Number three, who am I? By this point, you may be sensing a trend. This list may as well be called Jackie Chan movies with one good scene. So on that note, everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say, who am I? Who Am I sees Jackie Chan playing a soldier with amnesia after falling from a helicopter. He's found living with an African tribe where he has no clue who he is. He eventually has to pick up where he left off and finish his mission all while asking, Who am I? This movie has a car chase that's kind of fun. Uh, there's that fun moment where Jackie Chan's standing on the roof screaming, But of course, Who Am I is so highly regarded for that two-on-one rooftop fight scene. All before sliding down the side of a building. And for good reason. This fight is electric, with the two villains taking turns fighting him, timing each other, seeing, seeing who could beat him faster. But when time is up for both of them, it becomes two-on-one in this very fun, fast-paced, death-defying fight scene and sees Jackie Chan sort of dodging and rolling around the side edge of the building and he's about to fall off in a stunt that I'm sure was scarier than actually sliding down the side. I love this movie just as much as anyone does, and the best thing this movie does is make it the finale. Sadly, the fight is the finale, and we have to wait until the very end of a fairly uneventful film to get there. There's a fun fight with some clogs. Meh. Dare I say, again, skip this movie and just watch that fight scene on YouTube. And then watch the behind the scenes, because that's very interesting too. Jackie Chan may have done Ron Smornberg a bit dirty. <laughs> Number two, Armor of God. Jackie Chan's 1986 adventure epic saw Jackie taking a swing at an India Indiana Jones style action movie. With the opening scene hearkening back to the intro, the opening of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Although, more like if Raiders of the Lost Ark, if Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford also, you know, did a bunch of flips and stunts and a little bit of kung fu as well. A lot less running from boulders. 
Someone probably should have told Jackie Chan that Harrison Ford didn't almost die making it. Yes, this is the movie in which Jackie Chan famously came closest to death of all of his movies, pretty much, uh, where he did a stunt swinging from the tree, did it right the first time, and then was like, nah, I gotta do it again, it wasn't good enough. So he did it again, the, the branch broke, he fell, slammed his head on the ground, I think he even landed on the branch or on a rock or something, you know, cracked his skull open, nearly died, and he keeps talking about it to this day, making people feel his whole, out of context, much stranger, stranger thing to say. But of course, we will talk about this a little bit later. Armor of God sees Jackie Chan's adventurer character discover an ancient sword in Africa. This sword brings out a satanic cult that Jackie must stop from concocting their evil plan. What plan? I don't remember. Armor of God is a fantastically bookended movie. The opening is a lot of fun, just stunt after stunt as Jackie evades this African tribe. And the ending sees Jackie throw down with these Amazonian women in an extremely entertaining fight with creative stunts and choreography. Even if half of the time the Amazonian women are definitely being played by Chinese men. But Armor of God's major talking point is of course Jackie Chan's cracking his skull open and nearly dying. You really cannot bring up Jackie Chan or start talking about Jackie Chan movies, especially start talking about Armor of God, without some fan out there being like, Did you know that Jackie Chan almost died making um did a TikTok live yesterday. I just was, you know, went live on TikTok and was talking about martial arts movies and someone popped in the chat and was like, Did you know Jackie Chan almost died talking about Armor of God? And I'm like, You're gonna tell me? Me? This guy? This guy, right here, martial arts film freak guy, the guy who talks a lot about martial arts movies. Did I know that Jackie Chan almost died making Armor of God? No fucking clue. But because of this accidental accolade and with the help of the Amazonian finale, Armor of God has been pushed to the top of the Jackie Chan charts. But you know what? Uh, don't care, get it out of here. It's boring, it's just boring. That's the whole thing, it's boring. Armor of God is a mediocre Jackie Chan movie. Genuinely mean that. Mediocrity. Dare I say, Armor of God kinda sucks. And I think Jackie knew that, because Armor of God 2 Operation Condor is so much better. It's, it's entertaining from start to finish, wall to wall. Excellent, epic movie. It might be one of Jackie Chan's very, very best movies, and I think it's so good because he knew the first one sucked. <laughs> Number one, Wheels on Meals. Oh yeah, that's right. We're uh, yes, this whole list has probably been pretty controversial for a lot of people thinking, how could you say this movie is overrated or it's not so good? Hell, I just said Armor of God sucks. Yeah, that's right. Wheels on Meals. Wheels on Meals, overrated as hell, boy. Oh, oh my God, Wheels on Meals is one of the most boring Jackie Chan movies I've ever seen. When you ask a handful of hardcore Jackie Chan fans what their favorite Jackie Chan movie is, there is a good chance that they will say Wheels on Meals. And it is maybe the most entertaining movie on this list. Similarly, if you ask people what is the very best Jackie Chan fight scene, hell, if you ask people what's the best fight scene ever made, Kung Fu fans, of course, many of them may come back to this movie and say, Jackie Chan versus Benny the Jet Yurkida is from Wheels on Meals. And hell, I might even agree. Jackie Chan versus Benny the Jet Yurkida is amazing, impe impeccable, fantastic, fabulous, fruitful, and good. But just like the rest of the movies on this list, it is an absolute slog. Wheels on Meals is about friends, or brothers, Jackie and Yuan Biao, who own a food truck. 
they meet a woman who is like a duchess or something, and with the help of their private investigator friend Samo Hung, they save her from some sort of evil plot against her and her family or something. I don't know. There's some construction going on in the apartment next door, and they keep making noise. Fuck you guys. Wheels on Meals sets a wonderful tone from the beginning. We get this we get this epic fun scene full of visual gags and awesome training between Jackie and Yuen. Shortly after, followed by a quick fight with this motorcycle gang to let you know, hey, this is going to be a really fun movie. And it's not. Well, we get some small skirmishes, you know, and then like a skateboard scene in which Jackie definitely used a stunt double for that. And then we get a car chase that's just fun, I guess. I, I can't watch that car chase because they'll, they'll do a big stunt that'll completely wreck part of the car and then you'll see it in the next shot and it's totally fine and it bothers me. Despite those, nothing really is that interesting. Up until the ending. We then get one of the greatest finales in film history with all three, Jackie, Samo, and Yuen. We see Samo in the finale doing some awesome fencing. Yuen Biao being one of the best acrobats in all of Kung Fu cinema, and of course, Jackie versus Benny the Jet Yurkides. Just brawling it out, going hard, going ham, trying to kill each other, beating the absolute hell out of one another. This fight deserves every single accolade, every single word of praise that everybody has ever given it. Everything that people have said about this fight scene over the years is absolutely true. Sometimes a great finale does not make a great movie. This movie is a slog. It is. Oh my god, it's extremely boring. There are the small highlights throughout, so I don't think it's like a movie that you can just YouTube the ending or the beginning, because there's those small moments throughout. They're small. They're there. So maybe while you don't just YouTube this ending, maybe watch it with the remote close by so that you can fast forward when you start to feel a little drowsy or any temptation whatsoever to look at your phone. And then when you see something remotely interesting happen, press play. Stop rewinding, stop fast forwarding, stop doing whatever you got to do. Hit the pause button, go take a pee because you're not going to miss nothing. I guess you can just leave it playing. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Find something to bake or do something, you know, read a comic book, read a book. And then when you hear something happening, then look up at the screen. Because, you know, put it on as some background noise. And then once you hear actual things happening, then start watching it. That's actually a good call. I was going to say just keep with the remote, just skip forward, skip forward, skip forward, oh, something cool. No, background noise. This movie would be great background noise until you see a cool fight scene happen or anything fun like a skateboard scene or, or the car chase. That'd be fun. Background noise. That's a good call. But what do you think of this list of five overrated Jackie Chan movies? Does it make you angry or do you feel validated for not really liking these movies that people have told you you should love? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below and tell me other Jackie Chan movies that you feel are overrated and have gotten way too much hype over the years. Tell me those things in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Head over to Facebook, where there's the Martial Arts Film Freak Facebook page, Instagram, Martial Arts Film Freak, Tristan underscore Glover on the Twitter, Martial Arts Film Freak on TikTok, and I've got some merch over on Teespring. I will leave a link for all those things in the info down below. So do all those things, I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate you for watching. So thank you so much for it, and have a good day.